It is time once again, I think. Do I hear the music? I hear something. What is that? It is the pitter patter of little feet? No. Little fingers? Ah. There it is. Another moment with Bob brought to you by your friends at Offshore Drilling. Jade, the opposite of deja vu, the sense that you've never been somewhere before. Hey, Mike, putting a television in your house is like putting an invasion of the body snatcher seed pod in your bedroom closet. If you watch the damn thing long enough, sooner uh, rather than later, you'll end up in a Stevie Wonder song like this one. You believe in things you don't understand, then you suffer. I watched the presidential and vice uh, presidential debates on CBC up here in beautiful British Columbia. During the debates, viewers could vote on who was winning. The first debate's results were 76% Obama, 18% Romney. The next morning, I went online to read the American polls. WTF? Romney? <laughs> was declared the winner. Then came the VP debates between Biden and Ryan. Again, I watched it on CBC, and the Canadian viewers voted 88% Biden, 10% Ryan. The next day, American polls gave a slight edge to Biden. The CNN ORC poll showed Ryan at 48% to Biden's 44%. NBC politics had Biden at 38 to Ryan's 34, and CNBC reported a with Ryan and Biden both at 47%? WTF squared! A couple of nights ago, I watched the second obama romney debate, and the final tally at the CBC was 63% Obama, 34% Romney. The following morning, I went online to see mainstream media reporting. Obama won 49% to Romney's 46%. Obviously, Canadians think Obama and Biden overwhelmingly won the debates, but Americans, or rather the American media, see it as a pretty tight race. Who are you going to believe? The political industrial complex or your own lying eyes? The last time I witnessed a disconnect from reality like this was on August 1st, 1969, when I took a couple of hits of acid and went to a Led Zeppelin Death Jethro Tull concert. Forty-three years later... It feels like America's mainstream media are on the heavy drugs, and I'm an unemployed designated driver without anybody's car keys. So far, the 2012 elections have already cost more than $4 billion, and they're projected to go as high as $5.8 billion. That's a lot of money. There are 32 countries in the world with an annual GDP less than what the U.S. elections will cost. Americans spend $300 million on Oreos each year, but at least they know what they're getting. A bizarre combination of genetically modified wheat, soy, and corn flavored with alkali processed cocoa and fake vanilla made from wood creosote. Yum! But what are we going to get after almost six billion bucks have been blown? Barack Obama or Mitt Romney? and a host of Democratic or Republican members of the House and Senate, regardless of who wins or loses, the U.S. will remain a relatively easygoing fascistic police state at home and a voracious capitalistic beast stomping fictitious enemies into bloody paste abroad. How much is it worth to you to have Romney get the job instead of Obama? Would you spend one half of one percent of your net worth to make it happen? Sheldon Adelson says he is. I think Adelson spending $100 million to make the Justice Department stop the investigation of his Las Vegas Sands Corporation's alleged money laundering. But hey, Sheldon, listen up. You could have saved tens of millions of your sleazy dollars and given just a couple of mil to Obama. Weren't you paying attention when, after a year-long investigation of Goldman Sachs' widespread mortgage fraud that led to the subprime mortgage crisis, the Justice Department concluded... It didn't have enough evidence to meet the uh, burden of proof required for charges. Eric Holder doesn't prosecute criminals. Why are you giving money to Romney? You're a Vegas guy. Why didn't you bet on a sure thing? 
But there's another disconnect going on here. In 2008, Wall Street gave big time to Obama. This time around, the Wall Street bucks are backing Romney. Why? Didn't they like the trillions in bailouts so they could pass out billions in bonuses? Are rich white guys so insanely racist they don't like black guys even when the black guy in the White House and the black guy in the Justice Department gave them all the stuff they wanted? Stuff being the code word for trillions of dollars and a stay out of jail card. Is it just a matter of aesthetics? Do they insist on having a white wind-up doll deliver their spoils to them on a platinum platter instead of the black guy? If that is indeed the case, then what's the proof positive anyone needs to see that these guys are seriously crazy? The political industrial complex came into existence because somebody saw the similarities between elections and the stock market. A stock broker makes money when you buy stock. The broker makes money when you sell. The broker makes money when you lose your shirt. The broker makes money, period. The primary goal is to keep the money churning, regardless of what the market is doing. The political industrial complex needs to keep the money churning until election day. The media spend two years conditioning their viewers to be intensely emotionally invested in the horse race. And it has to be a close one to keep the people coming back to the latest news on their favorite. Who cares that Mitt Romney lied about lying about telling lies? Who cares that Joe Biden beat Paul Ryan like a gong for 90 minutes? It must be reported that the candidates are running neck and neck and nobody can predict who's going to be first across the finish line. If that means Biden's 78-point lead, taking it and making it even Stephen to fit the script, then that's the way it is. Everybody has got to tune in on election night to watch the season finale. What are you going to do? Change the channel? But there's something else going on here, and I don't have a clear idea what it is. It looks like Shelley Adelson, the Wall Streeters, and anybody who throws a $20 bill into Obama's coffers, are being fleeced by the political industrial complex. All that money is going to people who distort reality all the way to the bank. A multi-billion dollar PR firm takes control of the media and creates a phony narrative. Then corporate-owned proprietary voting machines count the ballots and they tell us who won. They've got both sides of the transaction again. What could possibly go wrong? Then we find ourselves in a Bob Dylan song. Because something is happening here, but you don't know what it is, do you, Mr. Jones? And it's Fouja Day all over again. Regards, Bob. Another moment with Bob. Brought to you by your friends at Offshore Drilling. You can find these moments at superbeans.com or uh, opednews.com.